Stacks by Splice is a, is a free tool for music producers that uses AI to help suggest loops that will stack nicely upon one another. And it's really what we're doing in the songwriting process is we're just layering different sounds together based on our own taste. And you can do the same thing here, but just with the assistance of AI. So I want to take a look at uh, how it works, how it can benefit you in the creative process, and you know a few of the ways that I like to use it in my own. Let's jump in. So the way that we're gonna access stacks is we're gonna to go to sounds and then we can go to under library, we can go to stacks right here. And we're gonna to go to create a new stack. And you can see that I've already got uh, about four of these stacks that I've made in the past that uh, I'm gonna use for different songs here, so. And it will save all of the ones, or you can save rather the ones that you want to keep for later right here in your splice stack library. So let's go to create new stack and we can take a look at how this works. So once we get onto this page, uh, we can choose from a number of different genres here. And this is a really cool way to work. Like if you're sitting down with somebody and you guys are just making some music together, you can pick a genre that you wanna work in and it will automatically suggest, you know, about three loops to start with uh, that you can use to start your song, right? So let's say we wanted to work in R&B. This is the stack we got. It's actually pretty cool. You can hear that they're all in the same key and they've been sort of chosen based on their BPM as well. So if we wanted to make this a little bit faster, we could do that. Or we could make it slower, of course. And it will kind of warp them to match the BPM that we're after here. The other cool thing is we can of course start over with the new stack, but since we're kind of feeling this one, let's we can swap out any one of these loops that we want. So let's take a listen to what the drums sound like on their own just by soloing here. Maybe I'm not really feeling this drum loop, so I can click this sort of loop looking icon and we can swap it out for something else. Okay, definitely not this one. Let's say we liked this one, and now we're just gonna listen to the bass a little bit. Bass is pretty cool, actually. So it gives us a really nice starting point to, uh, well, to start from. Now we can, of course, also add in some, some other loops here. So let's say we wanted to add in like a, a nice pad sound. Let's click pads and see what it gives us. I kind of like that one. We just needed something that kind of hangs there. The other cool thing too is you can adjust the volumes here. So I feel like these pads are a little loud here. You can take the drums down too if you want. And then we could also add in some like a percussion loop. Yeah, something like this. And don't forget too that we're, we're, we can always go back and edit any of the audio here because we're not like stuck with the loop as they are. As long as you like like one piece from it, that's totally good enough to to keep, right? What I like to do from here is is save this stack. So if we wanted to start from this point, it will <laughs> it will give you like a random name to start with, which is actually pretty helpful. I wish this was like uh, a thing in every DAW because half the time I don't know what to name anything. So I'm just scraping my brain to find something that I'll be able to remember it from, but this saves me a step here. There you go, purple delusion. So we'll save that as a stack. And uh, now we can go back to it if whenever we want to, because it's basically in the cloud. So even though this is a, a free tool for everybody to use, in order to actually download the loops, you do need to have some credits from Splice to be able to use on these sounds. But the cool part about exporting these sounds, 
you can do it basically directly into your DAW if you use Ableton or Studio One. But since I'm in Ableton, I'm going to select uh, Export Ableton Live Project, and I'll, I will show you. We're going to use uh, five credits here. I'll show you what it looks like. So here we are in Ableton, and I've gone to my Downloads folder here, and you can see that Purple Delusion, which is the name of our stack, popped right up. And we can open up this uh, ALS file. Okay, so if we play this scene here, you can see that it re it remembered the BPM that we were at, and it also remembered some of the levels that we set in Splice. And if you unmuted some of them, then uh, it would also remember that too. So it's it's kind of nice that it exports exactly how you had it. So you don't have to go back through and, and rebalance things if you liked it that way. Now we do have some other options for exporting. If you don't work in Ableton or Studio One, you can just do the stems or original samples, but I'm sure they're going to add more and more features as we go along here because it is it is a relatively new tool. So uh, stay tuned for that. But you can use the stems or original samples, which is obviously compatible because it's simply just audio. But one thing that I really like to do is use the stereo mix option. So you get kind of a nice balance here and we wanna sometimes mute the drums and possibly the percussion here. And it's like we're sampling a record with these combos of loops. So that's the other way I really like to work. So if I save this and I export this as the stereo mix, and then we hop back into Ableton once it's uh, exported. So here is our stereo mix. So now I can press Command Shift T and I can get this into a sampler. And if I go to slice mode on the bottom left here and reduce the sensitivity a little bit, now I can start playing in these chops and messing around with the audio a little bit more and creating from scratch. But the cool thing about this is that you're not just sampling the original loop, you're sampling the way that you chose to layer everything together. So you're really kind of sampling yourself, which opens up all kinds of creative doors for you uh, in the songwriting process. Another cool way to use this tool is just to try out a new genre. You know, sometimes it can be difficult to figure out where to start if you've never produced, like, let's say I've never produced drum and bass or something. And I click drum and bass, now I have something to start with. Now I know that AI has kind of a divisive reputation in the creative sphere, particularly with music production. I think a lot of people think that AI is just gonna take over, but in my opinion, there's no replacement for creativity. And as long as you are using AI as a tool to help you with new creative avenues and it gets you to make more music, I think that's a win. So I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. And as always, happy music making, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.